Hope you're having a good day today. It is September 22nd, and our reading comes from the tail end of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 26, through the end of the chapter. Uh, the parallel is also, or what goes along with it, is in Malachi. Malachi, the first couple of chapters. Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 27, you have the dedication of the wall. As the Levites were sought out, put in their place, all these things. And you have the thanksgiving, and you have the service at the temple, and the singers and the gatekeepers and all of these things. In the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah, all Israel gave the portion for the singers and the gatekeepers, a portion for each day. But you can tell in chapter 13, the, the last chapter of Nehemiah, let's read a little bit and you can see that things go off the rails and you can see why things go off the rails. Chapter 13, verse 1. On that day they read from the book of Moses in the hearing of the people, and it was found written that no Ammonite or Moabite should ever come into the assembly of the God, because they had not met the children of Israel with the bread and water, but hired Balaam against them to curse them. However, our God turned the curse into a blessing. So it was when they had heard the law that they separated all the mixed multitude from Israel. Now before this, Eliashib, priest, having authority over the storerooms of the house of our God, was allied with Tobiah. Tobiah was an evil, evil man. Verse 5, And he had prepared for him a large room where previously they had stored the grain offerings, the frankincense, the articles, the tithes of grain, new wine and oil, which were commanded to be given to the Levites and singers and gatekeepers, and the offerings for the priests. But during all this, and this is what I wanted you to see, but during all this I was not in Jerusalem, for in the 32nd year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, I had returned to the king. Then after certain days, I obtained leave from the king. And I came to Jerusalem and discovered the evil that Eliashib had done for Tobiah in preparing a room for him in the court of the house, courts of the house of God, and agreed me bitterly. Therefore, I threw all the household goods of Tobiah out of the room. Okay. There were things there that should not have been there whether we're talking about the Ammonites and the Moabites, and all of a sudden they read from the, they read from the law and they realize oh, that they separated all the mixed multitude. No Ammonite or Moabite should ever come, to the, come into the assembly of God, and so they separated all the, all the mixed multitude from Israel, whether we're talking about that or whether we're talking about Tobiah, who, because of Eliashib the priest and because of intermarrying amongst the pagans, I believe is what led to this. But here Tobiah is, and he's set up shop. He had prepared for him a large room where these things should have been. And here Nehemiah is, and he comes back, and it's like, what is going on here? This stuff does not belong. There's something here that does not belong. And throughout this reading, it, it, may, it reminds me of Jesus cleansing the temple. And there were things there that did not belong. And here, here Nehemiah is, and it's get out. And he goes and he discovers these things, and it grieved him, and he threw all the household goods of Tobiah out of the room, and I commanded them, verse 9, I commanded them to cleanse the room, and I brought back into them the articles of the house of God. Something was there that should not have been there, and Nehemiah, right? He cleanses it. Get it out of here, and he commands them to cleanse the room. And there's this concept, and the concept is there's something there that should not be there. But then the flip side of that is something that should have been there was not there. So they cleansed the rooms and he brought back into the articles. Oh, I just lost my place. Um, pardon me. Verse 9, I brought back into them the articles of the house of God. Verse 10, I realized the portions of the Levites had not been given them for each of the Levites and the singers who did the work had gone back to his field. And I contended with the rulers and said, why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. And then all Judah brought the tithe of the grain and the new wine and oil into the storehouse. There were things there that should not have been there. Tobiah, get out. Take all your stuff and get out. And that room that was given to Tobiah, that was meant for something else. So there's something that was there that should not have been there. But then at the same time, because 
resources were be being given to Tobiah. And it's, no, you get out because we're neglecting to do what we should do. We're doing what we should not do, and we're neglecting to do what we should do, namely take care of the Levites. We're not taking care of the Levites, and so what are the Levites doing? They've gone back. What's it say? They've gone back. The Levites and the singers who did the work, they've gone back to their fields. Why have they gone back to their fields? It's because they weren't being provided for. The portions that were meant for them were not being given to them. Rather, Tobiah is being taken care of. It's like, get out. Jesus cleansing the temple. So those things did not belong but certain things did belong, right? This concept, when we do what we should not do, it is both a, it is both a sin of commission and a sin of omission, right? We do what we should not do, and therefore we're neglecting what we should be doing. And so Nehemiah is addressing the issue. And as he's going through, one of the things he's seeing, and you can tell the priest and the high priest, they're not doing what's right. And one of the manifestations of that in the next portion of Scripture, verse 5, In those days I saw people in Judah treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves and loading donkeys with wine grapes, right? They're not keeping the holy day. It's like, why are you guys not sanctifying and keeping the holy day? Is it any surprise when the priesthood is not doing what it should be doing that the people are not doing what they should be doing? Read the first couple chapters in Malachi and you'll see that being, being addressed. Because you can tell just the manifestation of it. Like people, like priests, like priests, like people. And the Sabbath is being profaned. And it's just being treated like a common day. And people are bring, bringing their wares and they're selling stuff and they're buying stuff. And it's just a common day. And they're just doing work. And he's like, knock it off. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Remember the holy day. Sanctify it. And that's what ends up happening there in verse 15. The men of Tyre, the merchants, right? They're, they're selling their stuff until the Levites are actually told. One of the Levites' jobs is going to be they were going to shut the gates and the Levites were put on guard duty. Um, I believe it speaks about it in this, within this passage. Nehemiah says, I'm going to lay hands on you. Verse 21, if you guys keep doing this. Verse 22 the Levites were to cleanse themselves and go and guard the gates to sanctify the Sabbath. And then he sees, and in those days he also saw Jews who had married women of Ashdod, Ammon and Moab. Half their children spoke the language of Ashdod and could not speak the language of Judah, but spoke concerning, but spoke according to the language of one of the other people. So I contended with them and cursed them. And it's just a sad picture. And it's such a sad picture, and you could tell just from the language. You could tell just from their speech that they were speaking like other people spoke. They could no longer speak like God's people spoke. The language of Ashdod. If any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If you're not going to speak as the oracles of God, then something's wrong. The language of Ashdod, as it is. So, Nehemiah, as it closes out, there's still plenty of work to do. And he pleads pleads with the Lord, saying, Remember me for the good that I'm, I'm doing. Appreciate you. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you join us for our next brief look into God's Word.